floating along the Shannon, searching for some of the estuary's most remarkable residents. On board, Simon Barrow, Joanne O'Brien and Isabel Baker, all from the Shannon Dolphin and Wildlife Foundation in Kilrush. Now, our first stop appears to be an unlikely destination to discover dolphins. But the deep waters beneath Money Point Power Station are a favourite foraging ground for the animals. It makes this an important research area for the team. They use a range of monitoring techniques above and below water. Throughout the estuary is uh, acoustic monitoring, so we can put in devices like this, which is a new type of equipment called an SM2M, and we also use these other types of equipment called sea pods. Um, and what we can do is we can deploy these in the water for up to five months at a time. So during bad weather conditions, um, when we wouldn't be able to get out on boats, uh, we can start to use the acoustic uh, data to find out exactly what um, or, or when the um, animals are occurring. We'll be able to listen to what the Shannon dolphins sound like later in the day. But before that happens, we want to see them. McMurray, Shannon dolphin, uh, northbound to Setting off Delilah up river, Simon makes a call. Morning Neil, Simon here and um, we're just out in the rib here off uh, Kalima. We're just wondering have you seen any dolphins this morning? Collaboration on sightings with the Shannon ferries and with the Dolphin tour boats is important. Morning, Carl. This update hey, from the ferry yeah, sounds was, promising, uh, at least initially. At, uh, between 9 and 10 o'clock, between 10 to 15 Dolphins Mid River, and uh, jumping right out clear out of the water, but haven't seen anything since. So we venture further up river again, and this time the search is successful. We're in Labashida Bay, which is um, up river. Uh, we see dolphins here quite often, actually. I reckon it's at least 12, 15 dolphins. Yeah, yeah 12, 15 dolphins. The overall population numbers around 120. Individuals can be recognised by marks and nicks on their dorsal fins. What we're trying to do is take a picture of their individual dorsal fins, because every individual's dorsal fin looks different. Every dolphin has a number. Well, so far I think we've seen individual number 104, which is our most sighted individual. Um, and 180, they generally hang out together. Some of them have names. Well, we've just seen Sandy Salmon, uh, number 242. Um, so that's very exciting. It's always great to see her and to see that she's doing well. The story of this dolphin, Sandy Salmon, is indeed a remarkable one. This dolphin live stranded on the 1st of June last year at Bale Bar on the Kerry side. And uh, it was lucky that it was found by Joanne very early that morning. And a local farmer came down with his tractor and refloated it. And I, I would have been very skeptical that a bottlenose dolphin live stranding would survive. But 20 odd days later, Isabel photographed it from the tour boats. And she photographed it six, seven, eight times last summer. And the last time she saw it, she said she thought it had a calf with it, but she wasn't 100% sure. And one of the first dolphins she photographed this summer during the monitoring was that dolphin definitely with a calf. So when it stranded last June, it must have been very pregnant. So uh, Joanne saved two dolphins for the price of one. So it's a lovely story. And in fact, it's one of the few cases anywhere in the world where we've monitored a successful refloated dolphin, bottlenose dolphin, through natural markings. So that, that was Sandy Salmon. Brilliant story. But it's time now to head back to the centre in Kilrush. This is where the data from today's trip will be processed. First, Joanne examines some of the acoustic monitoring from Money Point. So, this is a section of file that we have recorded from the estuary, and you can hear that there's lots of echolocation clicks. That's one very fast click train there, so that's really indicative of when the animals are feeding. But you can also hear some whistles in the background, um, which you'll hear now in a second. Just some whistling there. 
and that would be when they're communicating. So this could be when they're collectively um, hunting together, that they're trying to stay in contact and communicating with each, with each other, but then they've got very sh um, fast, rapid echolocation clicks, so that's when they're really zooming in on a fish. Zooming in on a fin, Isabel is also at work. She's trying to match one of the images taken today with those already logged in an extensive photo ID catalogue. So we can click on the first dorsal fin and pull it up on our computer screen. And then we put it next to the fin that we're looking for. Um, and then it's a simple just scroll through the images and try to match the shapes and the nicks and notches with the fin that you're looking for. So if we started in our photo, catalog, photo ID catalogue at individual number one and we flick through, then bam, here we go. Uh, this is individual number 11 and it's a perfect match with the dorsal fin that we're looking for. So then we can say that we've got number 11 within the group that we went out and surveyed. All of this research points towards the Shannon dolphins being a small, isolated and unique population. It has established the estuary as one of the best locations in Europe to see the animals with great potential for future development. It's still very much an untapped resource. Uh, it's amazing the number of people in West Clare who have never been out to see them. It's amazing the number of people in Limerick and Ennis that don't even know there's dolphins in the Shannon. Um, so I think we could, we could develop it a lot more. I think it could have a far bigger impact economically. I think more people could come out and enjoy and see what we've seen today. And if they do, there's no doubt that they would take a much greater interest in the Shannon, in dolphins, and in marine conservation.